Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we are going to be doing a Christmas unboxing. These two aircraft here are the aircraft I got for Christmas this year. And with that being said, uh, today is currently Christmas Day from when I'm recording this. You should be seeing this next Tuesday, so three days after Christmas. So I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and this is actually going to be the last upload of 2020. So I want to wish you all a very, very happy new year. But with that being said, we're going to dive straight into these models. These are two models that I've wanted for a very long time. This bottom one in particular, I've wanted for a very long time in particular. And with that being said, we're actually, I think we're going to start with the top model just to kind of save the best to last. There is a bit of sunlight still left on the table, so I'm gonna unbox these aircraft here, try and make the most of the sunlight. This box, of course, is wrapped in bubble wrap, so I'm just gonna unbox this out of the bubble wrap, and then I'm gonna actually unbox the action model. You can probably see from the sides of this box that this is a Boeing 787-9. You can take your guesses at what 787-9 now, uh, but this is one I've, I've needed for Dulles for quite a long time. And this is the Phoenix models. Korean Air Boeing 787-9. I don't know if you can tell that it's Korean from here. Um, it doesn't actually have any of the Korean Airlines markings on the side. I think that's just because of licensing. But of course we do have the Boeing 787-9 at the top, the registration 1 to 400 scale. And then we have this Korean temple here. On the back of the box we also have some really nice designs. Of course we've got the same thing, 787 registration scale. And then we've got another Korean picture. Then on the sides of the box, as you can see, we've got 787-9 and it's kind of replicating a bit of the Korean livery here with the uh, blue, the gray, and then the white. And it's actually been a while since I've had a Phoenix model to unbox. Phoenix are kind of like the dark horse of one to 400 modeling. They don't really have much social interaction. They don't have any Instagram account. They don't have any publicly available kind of access or communications or anything like that. They just keep on producing these models and no one really knows exactly where they come from. But with that out of the way, let's just go ahead and unbox this model. And then inside the box, of course, we have the classic uh, plastic cradle with, of course, the traditional toilet paper as well. But taking that off and the plastic that's protecting the model. And here we have the model. Now, I usually don't record unboxings at this time for this exact reason. The lighting is a little bit weird. It's coming from a really odd direction, but you can get a pretty good view of this model. Now, the reason why I got this Korean Air uh, Boeing 787-9 is these have actually started operating to Washington Dulles. For the longest time, Korean have operated the Boeing 777-300ERs to Dulles, and only recently, this year in 2020, they've actually switched to the Boeing 787-9. It's actually the same with ANA as well. They've also switched to the 787 from the 777. I don't have a plain ANA 787-9 yet, but I do have the R2-D2 787 one from NG Models, which is an amazing model. However, I am probably going to need to get also a regular livery 787-9 at some point as well. These, of course, operate the flight from Washington Dulles to Seoul in uh, South Korea. And it's a flight I've always really wanted to take. I really love Korean Air. I've never been on them, but I really kind of like have this fascination about the airline. They just seem really cool. And as well, Korea is a whole South Korea. I've always wanted to visit Seoul and kind of go to the uh, border between North Korea and South Korea. But with that being said, I think I'm actually going to move back into the shadows there and the camera will adjust the kind of like lighting levels for it to be quite even. And then we can kind of take a look at this model in detail. Okay, so here we have the Korean Air Boeing 787-9. Starting off the front here, we've got the 787 uh, nose piece here. Again, honestly, I don't think there is a company that makes a bad 787. I think the Phoenix, NG, and Gemini 787s are all pretty good, in my opinion. Um, we've got, the, of course, the cockpit windows there. We've got some Korean writing there. I'm not sure exactly what that says. If any of you know Korean or just know what that says, um, it would be very helpful if you could like translate that. We've got, of course, the uh, Sky Team logo there with the L1 door, then the L2 door back here. We've got the Korean Air titles, the white underbelly, and the blue kind of top to the aircraft with this kind of like chromed out silver line stretching across the middle of the aircraft with the forward landing gear. Moving to the middle of the aircraft here, of course, we've got the 787 wings there, uh, which slope up pretty nicely. The, um, the wing flex on this model is pretty good. 
I wouldn't say it's too much, I wouldn't say it's too little, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. And then here on the engines, of course, we've got the chevrons on the back of the engine, the white engine, and then we've got, of course, the Korean Air logo, which, <laughs> when I was a little kid, I used to think this was the Pepsi Airlines plane. If I move to the back of the aircraft, you can kind of see where I got that from. Like, come on, you have to admit, that does kind of look like the Pepsi logo a little bit. You can kind of understand where I got that from when I was eight. I just thought that these planes just carried a lot of Pepsi or something. I'm not really sure. But this is the back of the aircraft. We've got the tail with the Korean Airlines logo, the registration, Boeing 787, all of that kind of nonsense at the back there. Then we've got the rear door. And that concludes the model. Again, I'm pretty excited that I now have this model. It's gonna be a great addition to the Washington Dallas updates when I get them up and running. Uh, Korean Air currently have 10 of these 787-9s. They were actually converted from 787-8 orders and they have another 10 of these on order. So they're halfway there to their goal of 20 787-9s, but currently they have 10. And with that model out of the way, we can move to our next one, which is the Witty Wings Chinese IL-76. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the situation with Witty Wings are. I believe there's some subsidy of Aero Classics, or they make models for Aero Classics. All I know is this is technically an Aero Classics model. But the reason why I got this model is, um, as you know, I love these kind of military cargo aircraft. I have a lot of like military cargo aircraft in my collection. I have probably the, the main group of them. This is probably the most well-known military cargo aircraft that I don't yet have. I of course have the Antonov 225, I have the Antonov 124 on its way, I have the C5 Super Galaxy, I have the C17, the C130, the A400M, the new Chinese Y20, and the IL-76 kind of completes that collection. Now as you can see on the box it does say Syrian up there but it's not actually a Syrian IL-76. You can see you can actually get two different variants. You've got the Syrian Air IL-76 76 and you've got the Chinese Air Force uh, IL-76 down there. I went with the Chinese Air Force version. I wasn't really fussed with what kind of airline of IL-76 I got. I just wanted an IL-76. For those of you who don't know, this is a Russian slash Soviet aircraft. Around uh, 950 of these were built. I'm not sure how many of them are still in operation, but these things are, to put it lightly, beefcakes. The first IL-76 flew in 1971 and ever since then they've been operating with militaries kind of all around the world. The IL-76 is kind of the eastern uh, country's choice of aircraft. However, saying this, um, these have actually operated for both the United Nations and the United States. Uh, they operated with the United States as firefighting aircraft on the west coast. But the thing I love most about the IL-76 is the noise these things make. The engines on these make such a unique sound. There's like this high whistling noise they kind of make. I'll try and find a clip of like one of these taking off to put in the video. And I'll play that now, but the noise these things make, they're just insane. On top of that amazing noise that they can make, these things are pretty much tanks. They can land in fields, they can land on ice, they can, you know, land in a lot of places where most aircraft can't. And I just love the IL-76. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this aircraft. We do of course get a stand with this model. It's not, you know, the Gemini Jets quality of stand, but it's a, it's a stand nevertheless. Okay, there we have the stand. It's uh, just a small plastic stand, but it does the trick, I guess. And then here, sitting in its plastic cradle, we have the IL-76. And with that now open, we can take off the plastic covering and take out the model. And there we go, putting it down there, we have the IL-76 in all of its glory. I'm actually really glad I got this kind of livery. Um, I really like the underside color on this aircraft. As you can see, it's that classic kind of like Soviet looking, kind of like turquoise color. It looks really, really good. And taking a look at this model in detail now, at the front of the aircraft, we've got, of course, the cockpit windows. Now, the windows on the front of this aircraft are pretty much insane. You can see we've got windows 
on the underside of the fuselage there as well as the actual uh, cockpit windows up there. The nose is just such a unique design and you've got this uh, bulge down the bottom of the aircraft there. Then of course back here we've got one of the doors with this uh, writing up here I'm pretty sure that says like Chinese, uh, China's People Republic Army Air Force or something like that. I'm not really sure, of course I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> And then of course we've got this blue stripe with the uh, classic kind of like turquoisey green undercarriage there. Moving back on the aircraft here we've got the wings and um, of course the underside of the wings are that same turquoise colour. We've got the red on the uh, edge pieces of the wings here then we've got the actual wings themselves with these amazing engines. And then at the rear of the aircraft we have the tail with the registration and the Chinese flag. Now taking another look at the underside of this aircraft, now the landing gear are quite interesting. Uh, they're not um, hugely detailed, but honestly I kind of like the way these are designed. The other unique thing about the IL-76 is the way the main landing gear kind of um, retract. They kind of twist sideways and then fold up into the fuselage and that's just another thing I really like about the IL-76. And with that being said, that does conclude this unboxing of the Korean Air 787-9 and the Chinese Air Force IL-76. Again, I hope you all have an amazing New Year's um, and here's to a very nice 2021. And with that, I want to thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.